We've spent a hundred years trying to build better, and somehow we made our buildings worse. In our rush to modernize, we lost the ancient wisdom of how buildings once worked with nature, not against it. Mold, rot, and condensation, all symptoms of the same thing. Our materials changed faster than our understanding of how moisture actually moves. This is the story of how we got here, how we can understand what went wrong and how to fix it through the lens of modern building science. For most of human history, nobody talked about building science. Builders relied on observation, craft, and climate adaptation. Through centuries of trial and error, they knew it worked, even if they couldn't explain why. Before the 20th century, buildings used natural, vapor-open, mass-based materials like stone, earth, clay, timber, straw, and thatch. Walls were thick, windows were small, joints were leaky, and plasters were breathable. These assemblies were forgiving to moisture. They leaked air so moisture didn't normally build up, and they released what they absorbed before the materials could rot. There were no impermeable layers to trap condensation. The physics were self-balancing. Then came the industrial era. New materials like Portland cement, steel, asphalt, and plastics made the buildings lighter, thinner, and more engineered, but far less forgiving to moisture. Portland cement replaced lime mortar. It was stronger, but far less vapor open and its fine pores pulled in and held water instead of letting it dry. Vapor impermeable asphalt and bitumen membranes were used to seal walls and roofs. Steel and glass made buildings sleek and transparent, but they also introduced major thermal bridges. Later, plastics and synthetic coatings, PVC, acrylics, polyethylene, created vapor-type films and paints that stopped assemblies from drying. Suddenly, moisture had nowhere to go. Condensation, corrosion, spalling, and mold appeared in ways that traditional builders had never seen before. It took decades of building failures before the importance of the four control layers in managing moisture was fully understood. Early building codes were based on simplified interpretations of research. Well-intentioned, possibly, but incomplete. Only by the 1970s through to the 1990s did a more robust understanding of how water, air, vapor, and heat interact begin to emerge. By then, an entire construction industry had been built around entrenched practices, standing between moisture-aware design and the people seeking healthy, durable homes. We still live with the consequences of that legacy today. The reality is that modern life demands energy efficiency. While the drafty buildings of the past stayed dry through constant air exchange, at least in part through constant air exchange, that's no longer viable in cold climates like ours here in Manitoba. Today, success depends on a clear understanding of the control layers. We can hold on to what worked in the past, like vapor open assemblies that allow safe drying, while applying a modern understanding of building science to ensure that our tighter, more efficient homes remain resilient, healthy, and resistant to water damage. The first layer is the water control layer. Water is the number one cause of building failures. Not earthquakes, not fire, just moisture. It sneaks in through rain, splashback, wicking, also known as capillary action or capillary action, as I've been corrected to say, and roof leaks. Modern construction tries to keep water out with membranes, caulking, and sealed finishes. But if even a few drops get in behind those layers, they can get trapped. We saw this happen with synthetic stucco. In the 1980s and 90s, it was a perfectly sealed system until it wasn't. Water got in, but it couldn't get out, and entire buildings rotted from the inside, leading to what became known as the leaky condo crisis. Next is the air control layer. 
air leaks carry far more moisture through a wall than vapor diffusion ever could. Yet modern building codes still fixate on vapor barriers, while the real culprit for moisture problems is uncontrolled air movement. A polyethylene vapor barrier can serve as an air barrier as well, but only if it's perfectly sealed with every seam, joint, and penetration made airtight. In practice, that's rarely achieved. And if we are going to use modern materials like drywall, OSB, and fiberglass insulation, which deteriorate quickly when they get wet, getting the air control layer right really matters. The vapor control layer is about slowing vapor diffusion, the slow movement of water molecules through air and porous materials. Vapor moves from areas of higher humidity and temperature to where areas that are cooler and drier, whether that's through a wall, a slab, or a foundation. In older buildings, materials like lime plaster and earth allowed the moisture to move in both ways. Walls could dry, dry inward or outward depending on the season. Modern walls often add vapor barriers that block drying in one direction, which can backfire. Finally, we come to the thermal control layer, insulation. This layer manages heat flow, keeping warmth in during winter and out during summer, but insulation isn't the whole story. While insulation resists heat transfer, thermal mass stores heat and releases it slowly over time. Lightweight wood-framed walls, the kind used in most modern construction, have almost no thermal mass, so they rely entirely on insulation to block heat flow. Massive materials like stone, concrete, or rammed earth, on the other hand, moderate temperature by absorbing and releasing heat gradually, smoothing out daily swings. Controlling heat flow also means managing moisture. But in modern layered assemblies, drywall, insulation, sheathing, cladding, those inner boundaries can still cool enough for condensation if heat or air leaks through. So these are the four control layers, water, air, vapor, and heat. Every building needs them, but few materials can address all four in one system the way that rammed earth can. Modern construction can perform, but only when every layer is detailed with precision. A missed seal or puncture can lead to moisture and decay. Rammed earth, by contrast, is inherently more forgiving. It manages small fluctuations in moisture and temperature naturally without relying on perfect membranes or assemblies. That doesn't mean craftsmanship isn't important. It always is. But it means that the material itself works with you, not against you. In the next videos in this series, we'll dive deeper into each control layer, one video per layer. We'll look at what went wrong, the building failures that taught us hard lessons about moisture, and how modern innovations like smart vapor retarders and adaptive membranes have tried to fix those problems. And then we'll look back to the ancestral wisdom built into materials like rammed earth and explore how it can achieve the same goals in a much more elegant and simple way, working with nature rather than against it.